wanted to film this video because I've been um, making plates recently, slab built plates using these press moulds or slump moulds, however you want to use them. And um, I like to put textures on the centre of the plates, uh, but all the text, oh, and I like to do that using rubber texturising mats. Um, but all the texturising mats that I could find, um, that I could buy, were um, rectangular or square. So these ones are Mako, I think, Mako texture mats, and they're lovely. You can see those, they're very nice, but um, they weren't the right shape for what I wanted. I wanted something circular, and then there's something like this, which is um, for using on cakes, but again, it's not the right shape. And what I really wanted was something round. I don't know if you can see the design on that. Um, I wanted something round that I could use on the centre of the plate and uh, replicate the design on a whole set of plates. So I f started figuring out how I could do that, how I could make my own texturised rubber mats, and this is how I, this is how I did it. So start off with a piece of paper, and then I make a mark on the paper, which is going to be the same because this is the size of the base of the plate, the slab plate, because the plate will be like that with the sides coming up. So that is the circumference of the base. So I've got my compass. I'm just going to draw a circle on this piece of paper to give me a guide for where the plate is going to be. So my rubber texturized mat is not going to be the same size as this, but this is just giving me a guide so that I don't make the design larger than the base of the plate. So again, now this is actually part of the design here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out my design on paper and then I'm going to use that as a template to carve into the clay first bit is to just sketch it out on the paper. So I'm going to roll a slab now, leave it to one side and whilst I'm letting it dry a bit I'm going to draw my design on here. So when I'm making a slab of clay um, I pat it into the shape that I want it to be roughly so I know I want a circle of clay so I'm just patting this into a circular shape and then just press it with the heel of my hand to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to use these roller guides, which are nine millimeter, which is about a third of an inch, um, because this is going to be what I do the carving into. And I want it to be reasonably, reasonably thick so that I don't carve through the clay to the other side. If you've seen any of my other slab building videos, you'll know that I really like this. It's um, cotton-backed vinyl tablecloth. So it's vinyl on this side, cotton on this side, so it doesn't stick, but because it's vinyl on the other side, it doesn't absorb, absorb a load of water and it doesn't wrinkle up either as well. So then, when I've rolled it, I'm just going to, I'm not going to compress both sides, so I don't need to. I'm just going to compress this side so that it's a nice smooth surface and any texture or bumps are smoothed out because this is the side that I'm going to be making a rubber mould of and anything that's on the clay surface is going to be picked up by the rubber mould. Make it nice and smooth. I'll leave this to go leather hard and then I can carve into that whilst I'm leaving it to go hard. I'm going to do the design right now. Um, yeah, so let's do that. 
Now this is a bit of a trick that I had. This is just a plastic chopping board. It's one of those chopping boards that you can get from a, um, a cooking shop. I slide it underneath there. Gives it a little bit of support. So then I can move this, put my hand underneath there and move it out of the way quite easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sketch out the design that I want to be on the textured rubber mat. So this clay is now a lot firmer than it was before. It's not quite leather hard, but it's good enough for um, demonstration purposes. Um, it's been a bit humid here today, so it's not quite as, as firm as it could have been, but I'm sure it'll do. Um, here's the design that I did earlier on. I just place it in the middle of the um, clay slab, more or less. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but as long as there's a bit of overhang around the outside. So this line, if you remember, that's the line of the plate. That's going to be the, the, the inside um, surface area of the plate is all of this. So this is the bit that I'm actually going to trace out. Um, and it's, it's not really tracing. It's uh, really, I'm just going to be drawing on top of the, I'm going to be putting the pencil or you could use a little ball tool, like a little stylus tool like this um, around the lines so that when you lift the paper up it's left an impression of where you want the design to go so that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to go around the whole design with the stylus tool or the pencil the thing to be to watch is that you don't use anything that's too sharp uh, when you're doing this because if you use something very sharp, like a really sharp pencil or even a needle tool, it'll just rip into the paper and you don't really want that. You just want to be able to press heavy, heavily enough on the paper so that the um, it leaves an impression on the clay of where you are going to be carving into later on. And you know, if you're really good at carving clay freehand, you don't necessarily need to do this. So I just like to be able to plan it out. So I'm gonna start this side and work my way across just so that I remember which bits I've done. some tools here. These are the ones that I like to use. So these are just little, tiny little loop tools designed for Scraffito. 
So I use a combination of these depending on which bit I'm working on. Actually with the circle, something like this circle, I would use the ball tool again. Once I've completed carving out the design, what I do is I put a couple of strips of clay all the way around, um, all the way around the design, and I do that by rolling out some coils of clay, and then flattening them out with a pony roller. Although you could just flatten them out with the heel of your hand, it's a little bit quicker if you use a roller. And then once I've rolled out the coils, just check that the, the slab is still flat and then position the flattened clay coils around the design. This doesn't need to look especially pretty, it's just designed to create a bit of a moat or a barrier so that you can pour the liquid latex over the design and keep it in place whilst it hardens up. So once I've put the strips of clay in place, I just blend them in with a wooden modelling tool just to make sure that it's firmly attached and so that there's no little holes or gaps between the pieces of clay so that the latex isn't going to seep out and then I just use my thumb just to smooth it out just to make sure that it's um, just to make sure that the surface is tidy and also to make sure that there's there is no gaps And then once I have attached one piece, I just bevel the edges on the two strips and join them together. Again, this isn't about making it look especially pretty, it's just about making sure that it's, uh, the, uh, the clay is sealed together quite well. And then when I've ended up with something that looks a bit like a flan dish, I just cut off a little bit of the excess clay because it's not necessary and just makes it a bit bulky. And then I mixed up my two-part rubber mould. Um, there's lots of different brands of this stuff that you can buy. I found this one has been quite, um, quite successful. Um, with the two-part rubber mold making kits. You just put the two liquids together in a bowl and then mix them up really thoroughly just to make sure that um, they're very thoroughly blended and I would recommend doing that in a, an old container that you don't need um, because it does make quite a mess of the container. I don't think it would be possible to clean all the, all the rubber off afterwards. Um, so just some sort of disposable old container and to empty the contents into the container and then mix them together really thoroughly. It's important to mix them together well so that the, the liquid does actually rubberize and become firm. And this particular liquid takes about, I can't remember exactly how many hours it takes to, to cure, but I just leave it overnight and by the time I um, check it in the morning it's 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 rubberized so then once you've mixed it all together I just poured it over the over the design and I pour it so that it's about um, maybe three millimeters thick 
not very thick because I found that if I make it too thick and too chunky it's actually quite difficult to use the mould once it's uh, firmed up. So I like it to be kind of bendy, bendy and flexible. So that's it, it's a nice smooth layer. And then in the morning when I check it, it's gone completely firm. So you can just peel away the little moat, the little clay moat or ditch that you made. And then peel away the the textured mat. And you can see you can see there that the design, the carved design is now imprinted on the rubber mat. And then this is just a demonstration of me using it on a plate that I made. So it's just a, a slab plate. You put the mat onto the slab and then using a roller I just roll the the top of the the top of the rubber mat and then when you peel away the the rubber mat then your design has been imprinted onto the clay slab and this clay was quite fresh and a bit sticky so what I'm just doing there is I'm just smoothing out the edge of the design where the mats stuck to the clay a little bit. And there you have the design. And this is just one of the ways that I make slab plates. It's just a little overview of one of the ways I make slab plates. If you want to see a full video on the different ways that I make them, then um, I'm putting a video together about that right now. And once I've completed it, I'll put a link in this video in the top right hand corner right now and you can check that out if you're interested. I won't include all the steps that I take in making plates here because it would make this video really long but if you are interested it, it, it is there for you to check out. And then there is the finished plate before it's been fired. And here is the same plate once it's been glazed using a celadon glaze to highlight the texture. And the good thing about using the texture mats is that you can decorate them in different ways. So with this one, I applied a blue underglaze to the textured area, wiped off the excess, and then applied a clear glaze on top. And then this is a small test plate that I made using the same technique, but using red underglaze and a clear glaze on top. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.